In today's video, I am going to go over my top five tips to not rebound. I'm giving you a bonus tip because this, this is something that took me a little bit to learn. Now I'm using that as my new measure of progress. Post-show is really challenging. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to another episode of the Off Season Files. In today's video, I am going to go over my top five tips to not rebound so hard after you diet. So I got a really interesting comment on Instagram the other day that was the inspiration for this YouTube video. And they were asking me like, what is the difference between like you doing so well on your reverse this time versus the time before? So if you guys saw the thumbnail photo, if you haven't, I'm gonna pop up the photos right now. So my first show, I rebounded so hard to this weight from being this lean at my show. So my first show, I went from weighing like in the 120s and I rebounded all the way to 170 pounds. I got my breast implants during that time frame as well and I was on like some medication for the pain which also made it 100 times worse. I was at the lowest point that I have ever been. I could barely get off the couch. I didn't wanna get out of bed in the morning. I didn't wanna to go to the gym. I basically like binged my way to 170 pounds and I want to give you guys some tips to help you avoid that happening. It was my first show ever. I did not know what to expect. I didn't expect to be that ravenously hungry and it's something that I needed to go through in order to get to where I am right now. So I'm very grateful that it did happen because it's giving me the knowledge to make sure that I don't let that happen ever again. So today we're gonna to be going over the things that really helped me master it this time around. And that's what prep is for. It's like each time I learn new things about myself and I learn how to have better balance in my off season, how to give myself more grace in the off season, but also stay disciplined with the things that I know make me feel amazing. Tip number one and one of the most important ones is stay on top of your mental health. When you are reverse dieting, it can be an emotional roller coaster seeing your physique change. You're used to seeing it super lean, you're used to seeing certain lines, and now your body is changing. Maybe you're gaining weight, maybe you're getting a little softer. And for some people, like that can be really hard to see your physique change that way. And I know that it has been for me, and it still is even this time around. I've just gotten better at checking myself, and I want you to also. So every morning I sit down and I write my off-season goals. And then on the other side, I spend a page writing down like, how is my reverse dieting going? How am I feeling mentally towards my body? And some days I'm feeling great and I'm super proud and some days I'm not feeling too good. But getting it out of my head and onto paper and visually seeing it really helps me move forward because there's a lot of times where we're doing so good and we don't actually recognize it. So recognize it when you have like, gone an entire day and you like followed your meal plan or you hit your macros or you didn't just stay in bed you actually you went to the gym when normally you would have wouldn't have recognize those small wins the other day i wrote a little page and i i realized that oh my god my first show i rebounded to 170 pounds and this time i've been able to maintain like a healthy weight that is something to be proud of and I recognize that. So however you stay on top of your mental health, whether it's going to therapy, it's journaling, meditation, gratitude practice, or all of the above, please keep that. Year round and especially post show or post diet. <laughs> 
Now, tip number two is keeping the habits that brought you success. A big reason why people experience a hard rebound after dieting is because they abandon the habits that helped them reach their goal in the first place. Take cardio, for example. I have drastically reduced the amount, but I kept the routine of getting my body moving first thing in the morning. This helps me start my day feeling accomplished and sets the tone for making other positive choices. Other habits I've maintained include posing practice, ab training, drinking a gallon of water, and doing regular check-ins with myself to track progress on my reverse diet. In the past, I dropped these habits completely once my cutting phase ended, but this time I'm adjusting them to fit into my new goal of building muscle and focusing on my health. Tip number three is to gradually increase your calories from your diet calorie intake. Don't just jump right back to your pre-diet calorie intake because that's how you put on a little bit too much weight too quickly. Look at this beautiful, beautiful meal. Guys, I love these little hash browns from Trader Joe's and you just put them in the air fryer and they're delicious. So you guys know I've made a full video on my reverse dieting process, but doing a reverse diet helps your metabolism adapt slowly so if you start by adding five to ten percent of your current calorie intake weekly weekly this can really help avoid rapid weight gain so as i was telling you guys i was slowly increasing my calories like inch by inch by inch instead of just going right back to my maintenance level calories because my body wouldn't be able to handle that. This is why I always say that post-show is really challenging because yes, you do have the freedom to eat more food and post-diet, you know, it doesn't have to be a show, but you do have the freedom to eat more food. You don't have a show that you're competing in or you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm I'm, di I'm done dieting now. There's like no reason for me to follow my meal plan. And this is where things get a little sticky. So that's why I've been still doing all of the things that I would normally do if I was on a strict diet, but now just in the off season. And now I get to eat a little bit more fun flu foods and like implement new things, but I'm doing it gradually so that I don't freak out my body. But this is way, I know it's way harder than it seems because you still have to be very mindful and you still have to watch things just in a slightly different way. And by doing that this time, that's made such a big difference versus the other times where I would just stop, oh, I'm done. I'm not gonna track anything. I'm not gonna monitor my protein intake and I'm not going to like assess how my body is feeling. And this time it's made such a difference. So I explain this even more in one of my other videos in this series where I talk about like the reverse dieting process, then the st stabilization, st stabilization phase where I get to my maintenance level calories. And the whole goal of like reverse dieting is to get you from that lower amount of calories back to your maintenance. And then if you wanna go into a building phase, then slight caloric increase for your building phase. That's the ultimate goal. But we can't just go from A to Z. So good guys, these are from Trader Joe's. They're delicious, crispy. I love them. Mm. Okay guys, we are at the gym and we're getting ready to train. And I wanted to go over my tip number four and that is switch from having physique oriented goals to having performance oriented goals. What is really challenging about going into, whoopsies, about going into a building phase or like reverse dieting is that it's a little bit harder to see your progress. So for example, when you're dieting, you can look in the mirror and you can visually see, okay, I have more lines. Maybe you see the scale going down. Maybe your waist gets tighter and it's a lot more motivating when you can just visually see things changing right in front of you versus when you go more into like a building phase or a reverse diet where you're gonna put on a little bit more weight it's 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 kind of inevitable you don't really see that progress as much so what I do is I shift my goals instead of thinking 
how can I have the, the best physique I possibly can to be on stage? And when I'm in the off season, I switch to how can I be the strongest and optimize my endurance, my performance in the gym, the best that I can. And the way that I do this is that I focus more right now on how am I feeling week to week? How's my progression in the gym? So you guys know in the past videos, I've been showing you that on my phone, I track my workouts and every single week I see, okay, where can I improve? Where can I go a little bit heavier? Where can I push a little bit harder? And I'm focusing on that rather than how my physique is looking. So now I'm using that as my new measure of progress versus visually seeing in the mirror things that are changing. The cool thing about reversing out of a diet is you'll notice an increase in energy as your caloric intake rises, making you feel more motivated, stronger in your workouts, and better equipped to handle daily tasks. You'll also have an increase of strength, stamina, and faster recovery time because you're giving your body sufficient fuel now versus when you were dieting, you might not have been. You might also be able to lift heavier, perform more reps, and recover a lot quicker. The increase in food provides you with more fuel, allowing your metabolism to function optimally again. The increase in carbs can restore glycogen levels, giving your body more energy to draw from. So this is the perfect time for you to start hitting those PRs. Guys, I know this is gonna sound crazy and nasty, but this is one of my favorite meals to eat. It's super satiating, it's delicious. It's actually savory oats. So the way that I make it, is I just do some quick oats and I do it with water, it fluffs up, and I mix the base with some either lean turkey or lean beef. Today I did lean turkey because that's what I have. And I put Tony's Cajun seasoning and like whatever hot sauce I want and I mix that into the oats and then I top it with two whole eggs and a little bit of hot sauce, green onions. Tell, uh, guys, it's delicious. Don't knock it till you try it. Okay guys, we got dinner right here and I wanted to go over probably one of, probably the most important tip and that is listening to your hunger cues. Okay, so when you're dieting, I almost burned my hand, your leptin levels decrease, which is your satiety hormone and your ghrelin levels increase which is your hunger hormone so if you've ever had that feeling of just being ravenous after you're moving from a dieting phase to like more of a reverse or a maintenance phase that's why so this is why it's so important to be very present with your food so i'm going to tell you a couple of things that i do because it's so easy to just sit down with a meal when you're post diet and you have a little bit more calories and just shoveling the food and for somebody who struggled with an ed in the past these are some practices that i still do to this day to help me slow down and number one is sitting down at a table with no distractions because have you ever just sat down and watched TV with a bag of chips and then you look down and the entire bag of chips is gone? You're going unconscious and you're unconsciously eating and you're not being present with your meal. So that's one thing that I do. Another thing that I do to help me regulate, regulate whether I am hungry, satiated, or stuffed. So whenever you're dieting, you're your level of feeling hunger is usually ignored. <laughs> Especially when you're in a dieting phase for bodybuilding, usually when you're hungry, you, you just have to ignore it because this is what you have chose to do. So your signals are all out of whack because you haven't been actually listening to them. So in betting a practice where you force yourself to listen to it is very important. So one thing I do is I'll sit down with my meal and usually I'm hungry when I sit down to my meal. I try never to get to starving. And the reason that I don't is because you're more likely to eat something that is like way off plan. So when I'm sitting down, I'm thinking about a level of one to 10. One being I'm starving, which we don't wanna be. 10 being stuffed, which we also don't want to be because the purpose of eating is to eat until you're satisfied. So my rule of thumb is, okay, I wanna land at about 
while I'm eating feeling like a seven or an eight where I'm satiated and I'm just no longer hungry. And if that means that I eat a little bit and then I set my food aside, take a little bit of a break, assess, slow down, be patient, bring my food back, take another couple of bites, then I'm more likely to be connected to my hunger cues than just shoveling food. Okay guys, I'm giving you a bonus tip because this, this is something that took me a little bit to learn and that is to get support and be patient. So I know it's not always realistic to work with a coach year round and when I did my first couple of shows, I didn't work with a coach year round. So I would like prep, and I would do my show and then I'd go into the off season. I just did whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. So the past, I'd say two competitions that I did, I stayed with a coach year round and it drastically helped hold me accountable. I had that support that I needed. Now, if you can't, you can also have that support with people that are around you. So one thing that I do is I ask my best friend, Kendall, and my fiance, Zach, to support me like during this time in my reverse site where my body is changing, you know, I'm getting my health back. Just ask, people want to be there for you. Don't seclude yourself and ignore your friends and your family. It's so easy when you get into like a low place to just go into that hole and not reach out to anybody, but the people around you, they wanna help you. Now, I know it's not always realistic to work with a coach year round because coaches, they cost money, but what I recommend, especially with my own clients, that when people join the Know Your Power program, I don't want them to need me forever. I want them to learn so much while they're in the Know Your Power program that when they're not working with me, they can do it on their own. So one thing that I do with my clients that are like coming towards the end of their program and they're ready to spread their wings is I have a one-on-one -on -one call with them and we go over like their game plan for reverse dieting, you know, how to move in the direction of a building and a maintenance phase, what training programs that they should start implementing and that's what I do with my clients I know a lot of coaches don't do that um, another thing that I would ask if you are a competitor is that if your bodybuilding coach gives you a reverse diet plan so when Zach was my coach and he was coaching a lot of bodybuilders, he would give his bodybuilders a reverse diet plan, especially for the ones that didn't continue working with him so that at least they had some sort of a game plan because going into that blind is like, oh my God, I did not expect for any of this to happen. So if you can't do any of that, if you can't um, have a coach year round, cause I know it's not realistic, do it with yourself. You be your own accountability. Still do weekly check-ins with yourself. Assess how you're feeling, how your body is looking. Monitor your increase in calories and how you feel throughout the week. You can be that person for yourself and then have people around you to support you when maybe your mental health is not really doing too hot. Be patient with yourself. It could take months to get your metabolism back to normal and functioning healthy and to stabilize your hunger. So just be patient and don't expect perfection. I haven't been perfect. And every time that I expect myself to be 100% perfect and be super strict and need to crush it all the time, I always am way harder on myself with that mindset than if I give myself grace, I refocus and I reset and I come back better the next day. So I hope these tips really helped you guys. Just give yourself grace during this period of time. You know, no, one of the things that I've been saying for myself, whether you're a competitor or you're just reversing out of a diet phase is that you are not your body. You are not how much you weigh. There's so much more to you than what your physique looks like, than what the scale says, uh, if whether you have abs, whether you have a glutes, whatever. The reason that people love you and are attracted to you and care about you has nothing to do with that and it has everything to do with the person that you are. So just remember that and take that into this week and forever. And as always, I love you all so much and you are more powerful. Bye.